Blue splash. Oh man, I saw something here. Look at the blue splash. Three plasm capture. Get you. Drain. Get you. I actually, when that card was spoiled, I, I was a huge fan of it as well. I got four still in case I ever play green cards. So one day we might. And on the side we have Tide Venom Mages. We got, we'll say, Mono Blue again. Uh, oh, actually, but Civic then again, Charm, so. I see green and I see Master Biomazer, another very powerful card that people have kind of like looked past a little bit. So we'll see how it goes here. Oh man, game one, turn two, Tide Venom Mage. Isn't that a beating? <laughs> so, Locks and, down an Elvish Mystic. Uh, beating. All right, so we have a couple Mystics here, and Andy Booth is actually playing again Devotion deck, but he's got his little green twist on it. Semi Charms is actually a real good one. It has so many different applications too. Uh, as you see the other Devotion deck playing simply just Unsummon with Scry on it. This guy's playing a Semi Charm that has the Bounce on it, Giant Growth on it, and the Hexproof ability on it. So it's def definitely better than let's say a Cyclonic Rift in this deck. All right, so we got a. We got a Nightville Spectre, and we see a lot of the Blue Devotion decks utilizing a card that I would say is a pretty weak card overall, but the fact that it's blue, blue, blue makes it that much better. And even if you're playing the Black Devotion deck, it's got you that, it's black, got you black, that black, angle yeah. too. Yeah, it's pretty good. So Andy, the last time we saw a blue-green deck was the, uh, the old deck with Young Wolves and Rapid Hybridization and all those fun cards that kind of get your super aggression going on over there. This one is a different type of deck. It's very similar to the other mono blue deck. But then again, we have a little bit of green to go with it. All right, let's see what we got here. Four. Is the master coming down? Nope. Oh, it's the Vidant. Oh, man. That's pretty good. Not bad again. Not bad. I Draw like two this. cards. Exile your card. Zagana. Oh, he might be able to cast that Zagana. Yeah. What a, that's a pretty good card exile, isn't it? On color, bomb. All right, so Ryan's untapping his elf. No, yep, let's tap that guy down still. And here's the dilemma. It looks like he's got a lot of action, but he doesn't have white or uh, he's missing color. He's missing blue. He's missing blue. He's got two yeah. stomping grounds, a forest, and an elvish mystic. The other mystic tapped down. Yeah, by so the there he is. Vendor. Yeah, he has double plasma capture in his hand. Yeah, I saw the blue cards. So he has a hydra here. He can play it. But the problem is, Andy's got a full grip too, especially after drawing a couple cards there. And he can easily just dispatch these green guys with Simic Charm, Cyclonic Rift, his Rapid Hybridization. Oh, he's just going to concede. All right. Ryan packs it up. So he's made Didn't it. want to give any yeah. more information. Unfortunately, Andy did see the blue splash. Off of the uh, the card flip there, and, and I like the and just kind of like segue a little bit. I like the concession here, and I'm a big fan of it because even though you get to stick around and like see more cards in their deck and know around, I don't know if you're well, like me, but I hate getting my teeth stomped in. I hate sitting there just getting taking a beat and just, just you know for an extended period of time. I want to get onto the next game. I want to get my sideboard in there. I want to get shuffled up. It's more of a mental thing. I don't have the mental strength to endure beating like that. It's it depends kind of, yeah. on your deck. It depends on whether your deck has the ability to come back from situations like that. Right. Like, let's say you're playing Mono Red, the Revelation for like 11 in a turn. Are you going to keep playing that game out? Oh, yeah. I keep fighting. You keep playing. I keep fighting. So you're a fighter. I'm not a fighter. I'm a quitter. And actually, uh, Chapin and I, when we had, were on not too long ago, we discussed this. The merits of it, because we saw Blood Moon resolved in Legacy against decks that have no basics and are unable to cast spells for the rest of the game. And we we're discussing the merit of concession there, just kind of to move on. Is it worth the pain and suffering to, to see an extra card or two? I don't know. Can't well, do it. I probably wouldn't be playing a deck vulnerable to Blood Moon. I would, <laughs> I would probably be casting the Blood Moon. Right, and I would be playing the vulnerable Legacy. deck and you would actually I'd see it coming out of your hand and as that's happening, I would be putting all my lands into a pile and moving on to well, the next game. Well, that's good to know. I will just cast a Blood Moon and I'll defeat concede. you and move on. Right, right. Luckily, Stone Blade technology involves four basic lands, but back in uh, Extended when I played against Blood Moon heavily, I was playing Tron, and Tron did not have such an easy time against that card. All right, so we're going to the sideboard here. We see another Jace Memory Adept in the blue-green deck. This deck is wild. We got Plasm they're, Capture. They're both wild. Yeah, yeah, these are wild decks. We got Jace Memory Adept. We got Ooze, multiple. We got Is it Static Caster. So his green deck, it looks like mono green, but it has a slight red splash for Rourke Thar and slight blue splash for Prime Speaker Zagana, along with Plasm Capture. And he actually has two copies of Steam Augury in his deck too. So Ryan is just pretty much jamming all of his favorite cards into a deck like we discussed earlier. People just love jamming their favorite cards in Standard nowadays and playing it and still winning, he's 3-0. 
Every time you say Rurik Thar, a little piece of me dies. <laughs> me too. Because this card, why does it have reach? <laughs> I, I attacked a flyer into it because it was Vigilance too. And then it got blocked. I was like, what? What, what do you what, mean block? What, what sorcery is this? And it's like, in, in Theros as well, I'm continually frustrated by the cards that have reach. Yeah, here it is. And uh, the six damage, um, obviously the big reason to play this card. It's just look a, at that guy. Does yeah. that guy look like, I mean, he's big, but yeah. he's not even a giant. He's just an ogre. How is this guy swatting things out of the air? I don't know. Is my question. I mean, maybe, uh, see in the picture here, he's got a little hook on the end of his hand here. Maybe stabbing some flyers. And then in Theros, it's the same thing. That 4-5 snake has reach. Yeah. It's like, a snake has reach? <laughs> like it's, it's just high in the branches so it can eat the birds. Yeah, the lore doesn't make too much sense there, but definitely, uh, even without the reach, very good card. The reach is just definitely, it came in play a lot during limited too, especially when you open that guy and you have it in play. Because the six damage don't really play too much in limited because it hurts you as well. But that reach, though, we can't get through it. Vigilance, reach, is there bashing, so it's very good. On the other side, what do we got here? We got Swan Song. Sing a song. We have Wall of Frost. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, Wall of Frost has got double blue in the cost. Um, so what? that's like a replacement for Claustrophobia. Yeah. He's then assembling some walls here. It can lock down maybe a little more than Claustrophobia. Yeah, hypothetically, yeah. Definitely doesn't want to see a Hydra on the other side. This well, thing's yeah. getting quite big. It actually attacks through the wall on the first attack there. So, yeah, we see a lot of uh, stuff here that's interesting. Uh, definitely newer stuff. It's things you haven't seen before. They're both free up, so it's uh, kudos to them. We'll see which of the rogue decks here will come out triumphant. I'm rooting for... Let's see, which one's more control out of the two? I thought you could say, which one has more islands? Yeah, it actually is that one, too. Yeah, we're going to go with... Uh, <laughs> 12, uh, 12 islands for Andy Booth. I don't think I can ever root for a deck with 12 mana dorks, so I'm going to have to go with Andy Booth over here. So, Booth, excuse me. Well, that's not fair, because he's already won game one. Well, he's so only going to six, if it evens out here. <clears throat> so, let's see if that'll... Uh, put a damper on his plan here. Well, I just really want to see Plasm Capture cast. Oh, me too. He doesn't really have anything to take advantage of it either. It's just the two, the four cards. Um, obviously, Miss Cutter Hydra's cool with it too. I guess that's pretty... Yeah, that's pretty... the question. Is What is he trying to do with the Plasm just Capture? Have the, the biggest Hydras of all time? Maybe a Rourke, could... a Rourke Thar? A gigantic capacity? Oh, he has three Swan Song on the sideboard too. These guys are all... They're, they're very... Uh, very musical here. This is very good. So Swan Song is a card that most people thought had good legacy applications. Uh, again, Sneak and Show, for example. <clears throat> but it looks like it's seeing some standard play here. Is this because of things like the Hammer of Porphyros and the Biden of Thassa starting to pick up play now in the Blue Devotion decks? Yeah, it is could be. Is there a answer for those? I, I don't think so. I think... I would just pay one more negate, personally, <laughs> just to avoid them getting a creature and having a narrow answer. Uh, it doesn't hit Planeswalkers either, and we've seen the resurgence of Planeswalkers again. And uh, if you guys do not like Planeswalkers, it's just a tough pill to swallow because those things are going to be here for good. Wizards loves their Planeswalkers. All right, so we have the Sylvan Soldier here of mana production. 03 for two. But has experts are pretty good. So, let's see if we can evolve our Cloudfin Raptor here. See, why doesn't that have reach? Yeah. It's maybe. just a bunch of trees, just like the 2-2 the Bestow creature. I don't know. These things don't make sense to me anymore. <laughs> it's a well, plant as opposed to a dryad, right? So, yeah, dryads yeah. can reach, plants can't. Right, look how much mana we got here. We have that seven is, next He's turn. got one each we now of, of the mana dorks, as you call them. Oh, man, that's a Garrick. <clears throat> that's going to do some... Real work there. Oh, he's got a Andy's got a, a Hydra too. And so all that Andy Booth has to offer so can we is a Klaus and Raptor. Can we rename Ryan's deck to Rug Slivers? Can we do that? It's sliver deck, right? Well, you said there's only the Mana Weft Yeah, that's a Sliver deck then, right? No? It is no more there's a Sliver deck. There's only four deck. Delvers in the Delver deck. They called it Delver. 
feels well, we're good. We're going to start calling Andy's deck the weird deck? The weird deck, yeah. <laughs> weird. Blue-green weird. I like it. There you go. Six right. mana. Garrick. Yep. All right, Call well. all of the beasts. And look Call them up. It's a beast deck, party. He's, he's pretty much uh, mono dudes here, so there we go. There's, There's three the guys. The Thar Oof. and the Prophet. This is a card that another uh, another one that's a huge dagger against control, and I'm glad it hasn't seen a lot of play because it just produces just a ton of card advantage. <clears throat> so Andy, Jeez, he's got to so find an answer. But he doesn't even need to use the minus three ability. He oh, never. Play the Prophet of Crufix, untap, and then cast a Rurik Thar yep. in Andy's upkeep. Yep. And we see some evolution here. He's reading Garrick. And Andy is in a world of hurt because he has the mana to cast every spell he draws from this Garrick. He's just going to have just tons of mana. <clears throat> and there's Master Biomancer, more notably a uh, limited bomb. Uh, also pretty good in standard when they had the evolution deck for a little bit. But definitely more of a limited powerhouse here. But here, let's see what it does. Well, it's good with Master of Waves, right? Oh, yeah. It's good with any kind of token production. Got some weird stuff there. All right, so okay, here we go. Ryan hit untaps. Yeah, Garrick got attacked, and we see five more cards. Mist Cutter, Hydra, a second Prophet. So let's start things off with a Prophet, huh? Yep. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Prophet of Crew Fix. All right, so things more have mana. flash. Untap everything in your during your opponent's turn. So, or each player's untapped set. So not even only your untapped set, each player's untapped set. That is just... Oh yeah, it's a Commander All-Star. Yeah. It replaces Seedborn Muse. If yeah. you have blue and green. Yeah. And Definitely better than Seedborn Muse. Yeah, Seedborn Teferi right here. Yeah. Alright, so uh, Ryan's basically playing what we like to call fun magic, where you just get to draw... Cast all your spells? All your cards just, and then draw and play all your spells. You're just going to have a good time. All your spells, yeah. You this... have one copy of Enter the Infinite in his deck. That'd be fun, right? Play everything? You don't really have infinite mana, though. Just lots of mana. So one, two, three, so four, we... five, six, seven, eight. Tons of mana. <clears throat> are we in Andy's upkeep here? Is Ryan looking to play something like the Rook Thar in the upkeep? I don't think so. I think they're he could, he could. I think they're on uh, his main phase here. Asking the uh, judge a question there. What is that? A swan it's a master. Or? No, that's a master of uh, waves there. Okay, so he's asking about master of waves oh, about and the top and raptor. Or also maybe I mean, he has to know about the master biomancer. It's the only reason you play those cards together. I think. All right. So he's asking yeah, if you're right. a trigger. The evolve and it will not, right? No. Uh, it, yes, yes. No, actually, it enters it with, so it's not a triggered ability. So all the creatures will enter with the counters there before power. Yeah, so it'll evolve it uh, twice here. Yeah. That's a good interaction you got there, Andy. Yeah, pretty nifty. So, okay, so we have like these decks here, these evolve decks, have evolved themselves, haven't they? We're playing all these sweet cards. We basically turned to mono. The green is super light, and we're going to see. Many tokens coming in play. Huge One, creatures. Two, three, four, five tokens. Gonna be a four, five Cloudfin Raptor. And yet, can't even attack with that. You I know. Think he, does he, he, doesn't, he doesn't know about the Rurik Thar, so he can't, yeah. He's just pretty much gonna have to say go here, but then again, he's not in bad shape. All these guys are gonna have tons of counters on them. And the funny thing is, I don't think we have enough big dice for all those creatures, do we? We're gonna have to, <laughs> We're going to have to just set, set sail here with little ones. Unless he forgets these biomancer triggers. Did well, he forget not the triggers? triggers. But it uh, does it or just... Yeah, we knew about that Rurik Thar, Andy. You, you, yeah, we're and he it. does have reach. See? What, people just don't know this guy has it. Why would you think that this ogre warrior has, has reach. reach? Yep. You know who does know it has reach? Ryan, Ryan. does has reach, yeah. Yep. <laughs> he set that up. All right, I wonder, what about the tokens on these cards here? Is this, I guess we're just going to have to uh, assume he forgot. I'm, I, I don't know. It, we might just... be simplifying it to say, like, these are all X creatures. And they... 
This is so much mana. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So an eight, eight mist cutter hydra, and it's got haste. That card's been surprisingly and uh, protection from blue. That card's been surprisingly uh, good in this format because of all the mono blue devotion decks. Oh, he tangles with the runic thar. Does he know that? What are the sizes of these creatures? I just want to know. I, uh, let's assume they're two ones for now. It has to be four threes, right? Yeah, well, maybe we'll get uh, a little answer. word down from the booth there. They're four threes or they're two ones? Oh, they're getting counters. Okay, okay, so we're good. And Ryan just uh, swung in with his Rurik Thar. Oh, he's going to double block that and kill it, I guess. So. Yeah, certainly. Oh, actually, it's pro red too. We can just throw the master in front of it. One, actually, you only lose one token. You put a token, you put a master in front of it, and that will dispatch it. And the uh, Hydra is an eight-eight, so two more tokens there. Yeah. Not the most profitable. Oh attack. no, he can't block. It's pro blue. Right? Oh yeah. Okay. So is it pro protection it's pro blue, is. Right? Protection is mattering both ways. Is it pro blue or just can't be countered? It's, yeah, it's pro blue, can't be countered. Yeah, there, there we go. Yep. Yeah, it's got both. This yeah, it's like the, the new. What was the original Scragnoth? Scragnoth. This is way. <laughs> Super Scragnoth. Yeah, this is way better than Scragnoth. This guy, so you can play can't on. Block this. You can play it on turn four, and then have a three-three hasted. You know, pro blue guy can't be countered. It's pretty good. Untapping everything. Yeah, Seaborn Muse. That's a fun card, isn't it? Did he activate Garrett this turn? Yes, okay, yeah, you did. So we're in awe of this uh, this board state here. Just massive armies on each side. But, one but you side, still gotta figure out how to win. Yeah. And I think throwing away that Rurik Thar was a mistake. Like, trading for one token right there, not really worth it when it's right. potentially locking down. I mean, well, Ryan just needs to hit one more of those uh, Hydras and this game's over. Because Andy just does nothing for it. Does he have anything? No, he, he has zero outs to that card. Well, he's got Cyclonic Rift, Can't, so if, seven Andy, mana. Yeah, if just, Andy hit a, a Nykthos, Shrine of Nyx, and a Cyclonic Rift, yeah. then he could return all of the creatures. Yeah, we are slim pickings on outs here. That is just not good. And Ryan looks like he's in the driver's seat here. Even though Andy got to put together some pretty impressive plays here with putting a bunch of tokens in play. They were all bigger. They are all... Four power. Uh, not only that, he also has just all the uh, devotion he could ever want for his deck. But the problem is, like you said, he needs a lot of help. He needs seven mana and the bounce spell for this to work. And he threw away the cloud fin wrapped around the attack. Knew Ryan had the Rurik Thar. Either forgot forgot about Rurik Thar himself, or forgot it had reach. Because again, this this is like my big thing. Like this, this is this going to be your pet peeve of the day. Random creatures that I don't know why they have reach. A right. snake, a dryad, an ogre, and a giant. Like the, the Arbor Colossus makes some sense. He's Colossus very tall. Yeah, Colossus He's very, very tall. But then why doesn't uh, a Crowan Colossus have reach, right? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, you know, I think that uh, in this situation, they just wanted to give uh, this guy enough abilities to make him spicy. Not to back it up with lore, and he is definitely a spicy card. All right, so we are going to tap all of our lands Whoa. again. Another, and another miss one. cutter, another and eight. That will be the ball game. If you would also like to play it, don't have a partner. Come on up to yep. the side again. Yeah, cannot block either miss cutter, so protection from blue does it. What a lot of hate in this format, isn't there? There's lots of things that exile white permanents that are popular, and pro blue this, and pro red this, and lots of things that are uh, very, very impactful. You're lucky they didn't reprint Core Firewalker because, let me tell you a secret, that card would be a four of in all my decks. It would get you. It would get me? Get no. You. I remember people I trying to... would find a way. You would find a way. I remember people trying to goblin guide past my Core Firewalkers and it never worked out for them. It did I not work just... out. Oh, well, that, yeah. So, I was, <laughs> I was wondering why just Suicide Rukhthar. He has another ability. He has to attack... Each turn, if able. All so right. This guy, this, well, let's let's do a, little, a mishmash of abilities. Let's do a little tally card. here. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna <laughs> write down a number. Star City Games uh, viewers here. I'm gonna write down a number, and if you guess it right, you get absolutely nothing. But you get props. So, this is how many times I've cast a Rourke Thar in my life. Okay. So go ahead and tweet us at 
uh, SCG Live or hashtag SCG MKE, the times that Shaheen has played a Rourke Thar lifetime, including Limited. So you can guess it. I have casted in Limited. And yeah, how many times you cast it? Probably more than this number, right? Two or three times. Okay, okay. That's good. And in Limited, like, you attack with it anyway because <laughs> it's a 6-6. Six, six. <laughs> So I've never that drafted, ability, I drafted that format a lot. I never opened that guy. The yeah. only thing about the must attack thing on, on uh, Magic Online is that it does it for you. So when you go into your combat phase, I always click on the must attack guys. Yeah, it's yeah. like, well, whoops. Yeah, whoops. Can't say uh, error, error. Yeah, and then it takes off the attacking icon. All right, so suiciding Rourke Thar is obvious. Uh, it makes a lot more sense when you have no choice otherwise. So definitely the case here. All right, so I was kind of like, I'm looking at... Twitter a little bit and kind of thinking about Swan Song a little bit more. And you know this how good that card would be if the mass removal spell was not uncounterable? Like that card would be fantastic because against the control decks, they remember envelop, people always play envelop. And blue counter target sorcery. Sorcery, yeah, and that was just, you know, Wrath of God, no. And then the game's over. Uh, and hollow burial for a little point too. And uh cruel ultimatum, nah. -uh. <laughs> remember that nah. they all extended so like there's cards like that that hate cards are good but they had to make the wrath uncountable so even these blue aggro decks will fall short to it let's see what a wrath does let's see what a supreme verdict does here tide bender mage night veil specters master wave just familiar frost from weird every card in their deck literally every card in these mono blue decks do not leave any residual advantage on the board after wrath back in the day you had thrax leaving tokens behind you had hunt master that had to be wrath all by himself you have cards like Lifebane Zombie that doesn't know when they come into play. You have all these creatures that have come into play. There's Acidic Slime. I go on for days. Angel of Serenity. These cards are no longer. So with these cards gone, Verdict is at an all-time high. And there's another reason why I think the control decks still are uh, going to be a powerhouse from here on out. Control is good when Wrath is good. Control is bad when Wrath is no good. And another great example is when Fae was legal. When Fairies was in the deck the control decks were awful because you could not beat Fed until they made Volcanic Fallout and Grey Sable Stag and the base set and all that. Before that, when they were Thawne Season U Turn 1 and then playing a Bitter Blossom, nice Wrath of God deck. <laughs> it's not going to do anything yeah. against them. Yeah, so Wrath's good and, right uh, now. So and Wrath's the Flash good. creatures. It's like yeah. Wrath, end of turn, play some more creatures. Click you on your upkeep, and this is just a miserable, miserable time. I Actually, that Nationals that I drew in, I had to play green. I played ramp because I could not play a Wrath of God deck. It was one of the few times. So. But now, uh, let's see if these non-Wrath decks here, let's see which one is the mightiest. Uh, I don't think we're gonna see any Plasm Captures because I think they're probably all gone after board. Not so good against the deck that has the average cost of a Legacy deck here. One and two, it looks like, for most of these cards. Lots of early stuff. Judge is familiar. I am not sold this one yet. Is there anything better than this card? Judge is familiar? No. Uh, I don't think so. Any other one mana blue drops? We got Clough and Raptor already in there. Murpho plays Curse Catcher in Legacy. Yeah, Legacy. I'm trying to think of standard. I don't think there is. Yeah, I guess you're right. There's probably nothing. Nothing that's Interesting notable, interactions in this deck is the Judge is familiar, the Night Veil Spectre. These cards have the hybrid mana symbols, so you can make white or black mana off of Nykthos. That's which true. is relevant if you're flipping over cards with the uh, Night Bell Spectre. That's true, yeah, you, you get need, some sweet might interaction. Need the mana to cast those. Some sweet interaction. Uh, Frost, Frostburn Weird makes red mana. So you can cast anything other than green, you flip off the Night Bell Spectre. Yeah, that's pretty good. No, good. no good green hybrid. Although Andy here is playing blue green, so he naturally has access to green mana. Yeah, on the other side. Steam Augury, I mentioned it was in uh, Ryan's deck earlier, and that card is so close to being real good. It's, it's so close. It's not quite Factor Fiction. It's not quite, and it's, if it was... What would you do if they had reprinted Factor Fiction? I, think, I mean, I would just hold be ready and hold a parade and, and throw like, a little, little party for all the guys at R&D, you know? But mainly, this card, the real real negative of this card is besides being your opponent's control is later in the game 
It's not like that fiction where you draw it later is better. The later you draw this card, the worse it is because the worse. Yeah, because on for turn four, when you steam all green, you're gonna hit some land drops. You're gonna be able to pocket some cards. You can use all your early cards. You're gonna find stuff to use. Even your opponent gives you whatever pile. You're gonna get land. You're gonna get some early spells like Zori's charms or cantrips. You'll draw some cards. It is gonna provide you pure card advantage. Later in the game, when you flip over those cards and there's some lands an Azorius Charm and an Impactful Spell, you're not gonna get the Impactful Spell, it's just gonna basically be a real bad cycle at best, and it just gets worse and worse and worse as the game progresses. All right, so we have a Judge's Familiar, and another Judge Familiar. Are those the Judge Promo Judge's Familiar? No, I believe those are Friday Night <laughs> Magic foils. Sad. Oh, All right, with Bird. The... He's More playing. mana dorks. Is Cloughfin Raptor a bird also? Is this a bird deck? Or is it kind of a flying fish, like a flying shark or something? Looks like a little shark, a little skate. We have a bird deck. Because we're naming Ryan's deck Slivers. We gotta it's give. the weird deck. And it's Osper weird and Weird deck? comes okay, down weird on deck. turn three. Okay. Well, I'll, I could go with that. I could buy that. And he does have a lot of merfolk in here, right? He's got eight. It's a merfolk deck. All right, so Ryan here is doing the same thing he did last game. Mana guy, mana guy, mana guy, mana guy. And let's just tap it all and just do it up. It looks like his hand's pretty weak, though. I think this is, what's that blue card? Is that a swan song? What is that? That looks like a swan song. Okay. So he's got, he did board in swan song, even though his opponent doesn't have much to hit with that card. A total of seven cards in the entire deck. And giving them another flying creature is pretty rough. Oh, uh, we Being are just, aggressive. He says go. So he... Interesting saying go there. He just wants the miscutter to block the Frostborn weird. You're basically trading four damage for four, but he has to tap all of his lands for that to even yeah. come into play. No, you... I think Ryan missed a valuable opportunity to, to put this game into a short, easy clock management situation. He should, yeah, he should have attacked there because Andy would have, if, if he did attack, he would have just swung in for one with the weird. Yeah, Because yeah. he wanted to cast this master. Especially with a hand as bad as Ryan's is, where it's swan song and land. Yeah, there's another land for him. Oh, he has Prime Speaker Zagata coming down this turn. But not attacking there is, is pretty rough, pretty risky. I mean, here I can see not attacking uh, because you're going to have to hold back a lot of meat here to block. But definitely plays, I mean, you don't really have any options here. He needs to take two damage from this stomping ground and then play to Zagana. Zagana, he has to. He's done that's, that's his only land? Yeah, he's got the Temple of Mystery, which comes into play tapped. So he's going to have to shock himself to cast a Zagana here, and that's what he's going to do. Going to draw himself five cards. Yep. Four counters on Zagana. One more card. There you go. So let's see what we yield here. Land, land, and then it looks like a Rourke Thar and something. So he's got a lot of land in his hand, and it's pretty rough because I don't think he's playing that much land. He's only playing, yeah, he's only playing 23 lands. And when you're playing 11 mana dorks in 23 lands, you're really giving yourself a, a you're, put, you're putting yourself in a corner here. So that's 35 mana sources. That's over half your deck. So this can happen pretty often to you. It's always a risk, you know? Always a risk. Yeah, but he doesn't mind the mana dorks so much. I mean, just play some extra creatures to block here. Trade with some waves. Yeah, he's, he has four of the miscutter hydras in his deck. And that's, that's, that card is just unbeatable right now. He's got to cut down on the number of waves coming at him. Those two one elemental tokens off the master of waves. Yep, he's definitely a... He can block two creatures here. Take 10? Uh, that's that's a rough spot to be in. Oh, oh the Biden. Man. That's going to draw Andy all the cards he needs to put this game away. But like we said, he still needs an answer for some pro green guys. Peter, Think how big that four damage Peter, was there. Think how huge it was. I don't really, well, atta I don't really I, attack with just those elementals. You, I mean, if you didn't do that, you probably should attack with the Frostborn Weird, too. 
if he'd attacked with the miscut or hydra, he would have taken one back from yeah. the weird, right? Right? Yeah. So that may actually matter. Well, he also took all of his damage too. He only can block two guys. I think if I was Andy, I would have probably got in there with a Frostbolt weird too. Yeah, most definitely. Just get another extra point of damage in. Yeah, it would probably be two points because if he wanted to block the Frostbolt weird, he would have taken an additional two from one of the wave guys, putting him at three life. Oh, there's a Simic Charm. Oh, now Simic Charm. Bouncing the Master. Yeah, it can definitely clear a lot of the board over there. Buy, buy yourself a turn and then maybe deploy some more threats. Does he have a profit of Crufix yet? That would be a really big one to allow him to utilize all the cards he's drawn off of Prime Speaker Zagana. Yeah, I think sadly, it looks like he just has a lot of land though. He's got at least two or three more in hand. A Swan Song, a Simic Charm, and there's another uh, Sylvan Carriad there. Okay, so he needs... He needs Rurik Thar to keep the Judge's Familiars off his back. Because it's got reach. It also has the must attack that I forgot about. So I forgot that he must attack. Andy forgot that he has reach. And you probably forgot that it had vigilance, right? I just don't. I, I forgot everything about the card. <laughs> you forgot it existed. Yeah. So All right. let's see what happens. Deploy here. some Karyatids. Trying to buy himself some time here, get more mana. Does not deploy Rurik Thar, the unbowed. So, well now he is now he's attacking with the mist cutter. Yeah, and I mean better late than never. He needs to happen though. I don't know. Does he have enough creatures to block all of these threats, or is he just counting on using the Simic Charm to reset the master here? Alright, and uh, congratulations. congratulations to Cameron Paul Warrior. Uh, he was correct in the number of times I've cast Rurik Thor, and the answer is zero. Is it five? It's zero. Uh, zero. Well done. You win nothing. But uh, congratulations, and thanks for listening. We appreciate it. Appreciate your help. Definitely a card that's not very potent. Not, not in the blue decks I play. It would be very counterproductive by playing it and using counterspells that... behind it. That is a lethal set of Judges Familiars. Attack for two this turn, and then the third one just cast. Yeah. Ryan might have to swan song his own spell. Can you do that? Is it a counter spell its controller puts in, I'm sure? He could do that. Yeah. But I believe he needs to have his Simic Charm resolve here on the Master. Or does he have enough creatures on the ground? I don't know about attacking with the Mist Cutter Hydra that turn. Well, no. picture it. If he would attack the first turn and have him at 12, if Ryan drew another Mist Cutter Hydra, he'd win this game. Because he could easily deal 12 to him with both Hydras out. He'd make but, an 8-8 eight, eight Hydra, yeah. Yeah, that would have been... So Ryan will definitely kick himself if he draws a Hydra here because he doesn't have enough mana to make it lethal at this point. Okay, Andy plays Nykthos, Shrine of Nyx. Oh, Ooh. Tidebender. Tidebender's gonna tap down something big, probably the Prime Speaker Zagana. He might get all his creatures hexproof, but I don't think it's worth it. I think he needs to save it for bouncing, like you said. Well, unfortunately, that Nykthos means that Andy can immediately recast the Master of Waves this turn. He's got enough devotion to do that. Yeah, um... Okay, but he just, uh... Using his mana for something else. Oh, Cyclonic Rift. Swan Song is going to eat this. That was an overloaded Cyclonic Rift off of all of this. Well, here, this is interesting. Andy is lining up his judges for years, thinking about countering oh, man, the Swan Song. What a mistake that would be, not knowing he has the mana elves in play. Oh no, he doesn't know. Well. He's got three judges from there. He has though. tons of mana out though. He's gonna use two of those. It. Two of those guys have summoning sickness. See that? So he can still. Oh, both of them do. I thought only so one. So he did. would need. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, this is well, gonna. And Andy wants to sacrifice all of his judges' familiars. That would be a good play. That this game is over if he does, because the rift resolves and he just attacks him for lethal. 
Yeah, you, so you definitely sack all your familiars here, and then uh, the game is over. Ryan, you don't have a choice. You know, you have to pay for it. And you gotta hope that he makes a mistake. Oh, so he's floating two mana. Is he floating two mana and then letting it result? He is. But the problem with this play is that he can just set the judge from order to stop whatever yeah, spell he does charm. here. So, so either it looks way, like he, was yeah, done. he was not. Didn't quite have enough. Go to my combat, he says, Simic Charm, targeting your master. Uses the two floating mana. Oh, he doesn't say a judge familiar. Oh. Oh, man. That's a big mistake. Gives Ryan a shot, but what shot does he have? He had all those, yeah. those mana creatures, so now he's just down to five lands. Yeah, well. So it was a mistake by Andy. He could have countered this and Kill attacked him. with the, the elemental tokens for the, the win, but it doesn't really give Ryan much of an no, opening. He's got no. a bunch of land in his hand anyway. So, all right. So Andy Booth wins this game two one. Uh, Mono blue devotion with a splash of green. Uh, we are seeing devotion as probably easily the best mechanic in a long time for competitive play. Yeah. So Especially with this pro tour mod. So in the past, the best mechanics have been things that uh, basically give you stuff for free. Yes. Cascade, Storm. pretty good mechanics. Storm, Affinity, you're often casting uh, Mirror Enforcers uh, for Brexian zero. Brexian Mana. Brexian Mana is a sure. huge one too. So free Devotion, stuff. not exactly free, but the more Devotion you have, them, the bigger your effect. Yeah. So kind of like a free kicker maybe. Yeah, yeah. And I think... No one really, it's hard to see how cards interact with others until those cards become legal and played. So when this card